Hello, I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks on Mega Log Viewer today. There we go. File, open, we're going to open a data log here. There we go. I'm not sure which one of these is going to be a good full data log. It's going to take a second to do some processing. The screen is going to shift around a little bit. Blue bar goes across the bottom as it processes the whole data log. <clears throat> and it adjusts the zoom. Okay. First thing we need to go over over here on the left. See where my mouse is on the left. We've got RPM. Click that. You can choose which four things you would like in this top top. Um, the, this top half is one set of graphs, and then down here we've got another set. We can actually have a third. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these gauges down here, the, these red, yellow, green things. They're just kind of annoying. Um, if you're trying to look for something specific that's not graphed, you can do that, but for the most part, you don't need them. It just gives you more room. Now, you can have up to four graphs on screen. See, I've got the RPM, manifold air pressure, throttle position, and battery voltage here at the top. And then graph two. I've got air fuel ratio, manifold air temperature, coolant, and my duty cycle. Down here I can do, um, I can select from all of the records that are coming over from the Megasquirt into the log file. The log file is either on Megasquirt 3, it's going to be recorded to the SD card. Um, Megasquirt 2, you're going to be in Tuner Studio and you're going to tell it to record a log file. So, however you've got the log file, you're, you're now in it. Here's Let's go with pulse width. See, I add something to this graph down here, and you can see that it's added another another set of graphs down here. So I can do four more things down here. Um, so we're doing um, sequential pulse widths, uh, sequential injection. You can monitor your different injections, pulse widths. Um, you can monitor knock retard if you've got a knock sensor. Um, if you've got a real-time barometer correction, you can do that. IAC step. So I do have a stepper idle control in this car that I was data logging here. So you can go through this log file. Now, if I click that spot, it's going to go to that spot. If I want to start stepping through it, I can step to that spot, and then it goes over here. But if I keep clicking here, it's going to keep stepping to the right. If I want to go backwards, I can step over here and keep stepping to the left. Now, if I want to play it back, I just hit this play button down here at the bottom. See down here? Play. And now it's going to play it back. Um, speed 100%. We're zoomed in at 10, 10x. Let's zoom. Okay, I've pressed pause now. I'm going to zoom out. 9x, 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay. Zoomed all the way out. Now, I'm going to play it back. And this is what it looked like as it came in. Now, it's, you can't see too much detail, so let's go ahead and pause it again. We'll zoom back in. Let's see, at 10x, we've got pretty good detail. Eight, and there's 10. Play. And it, it's a little jerky, but uh, this isn't the greatest computer I'm playing this on. So there, you can see the, what the Megasquirt was seeing as the engine ran. And this down here is the uh, the timer counter that's in the Megasquirt 6377. Um, it counts in seconds, so you get milliseconds out here. Let's stop and see what we've got here. I, this looks like a, a data log of me going down the freeway or something. Um, so, let's see, we've got RPM is 800. Okay, so this was idling even. This wasn't even going down the freeway. 800 RPM, manifold air pressure, um, 44 kPa, so that's, that's good vacuum. Uh, throttle is closed, 0% throttle. Um, over here on the left here, we've got max for each of these inside this data log and minimum. So the minimum RPM inside this data log was 588. The maximum RPM was 3500. The maximum map reading was 99 kPa, which uh, makes sense because it wasn't a turbo car, it wouldn't go over 100. Once you cross 100, you're in boost, generally. 18.7 um, kPa was minimum, so that was probably decelerating somewhere. 
14.2 volts minimum and 14.6 maximum. As you can see here, my, um, my battery voltage is 14.2 and it's a perfectly flat line across here. So the battery is fully charged and it was a healthy battery and good charging system. You can, you, you can sometimes see uh, ground problems with a jittery battery voltage or uh, if your battery's dead, you're going to see a lot of jitter there too because your battery's not doing its job. Um, down here we've got coolant. The coolant was 187, so the engine was fully warmed up while I was recording this log. Um, 186, so there wasn't a whole lot of movement on the coolant. It went from uh, 175, the lowest point, to 190. So, yeah, even a one degree change or half a degree change is going to m make some notice on this log because it's only got 190 to 176 for this whole scale here. Um, duty cycle, we went from 1% to the lowest to 14.7% at the maximum. Um, manifold air temperature was 50 to 65, so it's not bad. Um, let's see if we can, we can see that my, my idle step is just keeping the idle where it's supposed to be. Um, RPM was 8, 820. I'd probably set the RPM, the idle speed to 800. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard, left and right, to step forward and backward in the log. Um, up and up and down, adjust the zoom. So um, let's go farther down this log. See if I got anything useful in here. Oh, see down here at the bottom, we've got this red spot. See near my mouse at the bottom of the screen. This red spot is. Um, Tuner Studio, while it's capturing a data log, if you feel something that you want to note, you can hit the space bar, and it'll put this red line right here in the data log. See, this blue bar is how far into the data log we are right now. See, and I can jump really far forward in the data log by clicking down here. So let's go look at this red spot right here. See this red line coming down? This is uh, what we're looking for. This is something interesting that we want to know about. So... I probably recorded it after something happened, so we'll go back here, and we do see a spot where the battery voltage spiked for a split second, sort of. Went from 14.5 to, okay, 14.6. There's not a whole lot of range there because we've only got 14.2 to 14.6, so that wasn't what I was recording. Throttle position went down just a touch, but uh, I'm not seeing much. Map was 89. Okay, I may have recorded this. I may have hit that data log right there because I heard some pinging. Because as you can see, map was 88% 88 kPa, so near uh, um, near full full bar. Throttle position was at 35% uh, uh, throttle, and we're at three grand. I may have tagged this due to knock. Um, I don't have a knock sensor on this engine, but it wasn't wasn't a uh, turbo so I could just listen for pinging and flag it right there so I, now I know that I need to go to 3000 rpm in the data log or into my uh, ignition table and 88 kPa maybe 90 kPa and pull off a couple of degrees of spark advance and see if that solves my detonation problem so let's continue down the records here not a whole lot to see in this data log. This was probably me cruising the freeway, so it's really, there's some idle. Oh, no, this isn't idle because the RPM is going up. This is probably me going, coasting to a stop, and then I go again or something. Anyways, so there are a lot of options in here. I haven't used any of this. You don't need any of this to, if, you, if for some reason you're, um, AFR is coming up as volts rather than um, actual air fuel ratio. See right here, it's 12.8 to 1 because um, I'm at full. Yeah, I'm accelerating hard here. Anyways, you can go to calculated fuel or calculated fields, wideband O2 AFR, and you can select one. Mine doesn't seem to need it, so I'm good to go. Um, I've seen other. I think this is a Mega Squirt 3 thing. A Mega Squirt 3, you don't need to select it. Mega Squirt 2, you do. Because I was playing with uh, a Mega Squirt 2 this weekend and it needed that. Uh, one of the things you might want to do is uh, show 50% graph line. Um, that gives you a halfway point on your log here. 
and uh, I guess it's got some numbers here that show you what halfway would be. Here's some nice search features. You can go RPM. You can jump to the spot where you hit maximum RPM. There's where I peaked at the RPM. I did it at 23% throttle. Um, we can jump to um, the maximum map send sensor reading. It was right here. I was at 41% uh, throttle. Um, the RPM was climbing slowly. Uh, may have been climbing a hill there. Something. Um, throttle position. Maximum throttle during this data log was 46% throttle. And here it is. You can see what was going on there. You can um, battery voltage. Didn't have much change in the battery voltage. AFR. Um, you could, if you want to see where you hit the leanest spot, here's my leanest spot. Um, it was as I was going on throttle, so this is a throttle tip in lean because I didn't have proper um, Excel enrichment going on here. Um, you can see the um, idle is closing its the idle control valve is closing itself as I stepped on the throttle because here I was throttle was zero percent. I step on it and uh, the throttle position throttle control um, closes itself. It's a stepper throttle control valve. Ma manifold air temperature didn't change much. Same thing with coolant. D cycle uh, pulse width. Yeah, so. You can jump to special places in the log. You can see where it was at the minimum RPM. And it was, uh, RPM was minimum here. Um, I had stepped on the throttle, map went up, AFR went quite lean, so the RPM went down. I probably let the clutch out, and I don't have Excel enrichment, so it went lean and it didn't have much power, and the RPM went down as I tried to let the clutch out. Nice to see it in the data log. Um, so, this is a mega log viewer in a nutshell. Um, hope this helps anybody that just wanted a quick overview.